Living donor liver transplantation in the right family is the best transplant for a child. My teacher, Dr. Christoph Brolsch at the University of Chicago, nearly 30 years ago, had the idea that this could be done. I was fortunate to be his young associate when the first living donor liver transplants were performed in the United States starting in 1989. In this operation, the donor, who's usually the mother or the father, will donate a small part of their liver that is removed surgically in ways that you will hear about to create the minimal harm to the donor. Once this piece of liver, that's usually about 200 grams and is exactly the right size for a small baby, is removed, it is carefully preserved, and attached in the full transplant position. The baby who's receiving the transplant therefore goes to the operating room shortly after the parent donor has their surgery undertaken. The recipient surgeon will then carefully remove the attachments of the diseased liver so that the blood vessels which attach the liver to the body are prepared to be cut and attached to the new liver. As soon as the new liver is removed from the parent's body, it is flushed with preservation solution and brought to the other operating room. It is attached in a very precise way using microvascular techniques under high magnification because we're generally dealing with very small arteries, veins, and bile ducts. These steps are similar to deceased donor liver transplantation, but carried out in the optimal conditions with perfect planning ahead of time and the assurance that all of the most experienced members of the medical and surgical team are present on the day of the liver transplant. Because the parent is a living donor, the liver is biologically related to the recipient, thereby ensuring the lowest chance of rejection. We know from kidney transplantation that the donated kidney from a relative has the highest chance of a long-term result without rejection. This applies in liver as well. Our primary focus when doing donor evaluations is donor safety. Um, the goal is an excellent outcome for the entire family. And what that means is the child does well, the parent does well, or the donor who is donating does well, and recovers quickly so that can, they can participate in the recovery of the child. Um, the donor evaluation is compressed so that it is as convenient as possible, but it remains as thorough as we think is necessary. So typically the donor evaluation involves um, a surgical visit, a social work visit, a psychiatrist visit, um, routine blood tests, uh, including tests to ensure blood group compatibility, and then a series of liver tests that are aimed at making sure that the, the parent or, or donor who's undergoing the evaluation is healthy and has no major uh, medical problems that would prevent the uh, donation. Ultimately, both a MRI and CT scan are performed to map out the anatomy of the liver so that the operation before uh, the day of surgery can be planned thoroughly. The donor evaluation um, has as its primary focus the safety of the donor. So we are looking for major medical problems that would increase the risk of donation. So 
examples of things that would rule out a donor is diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, um, or uh, liver disease that may have affected the recipient. So uh, genetic predisposition. Um, for the most common indications for liver transplant in children like biliary atresia or primary sclerosis and cholangitis, finding those conditions are relatively rare in the donor. Um, but we also do a variety of additional tests that are predominantly aimed at ensuring the safety of the donor. And so most donors at the end of the two-day evaluation, the, the uh, entire committee and people that they have met uh, meet and they usually make a recommendation. About more than half of donors for children will be found, if they have no other medical problems, um, to be reasonable donors uh, and safe to donate. The amount of liver that is needed to transplant these children is really small. Basically, what we need to do in the living donor is retrieve about 20% of the liver of an adult, uh, which represents usually what we call the left lateral segment of the liver. Because uh, of the small amount of liver, uh, the operation is a little more simple than the one that is required in adults and carries less burden for the, uh, the donor because the amount, once again, the amount of liver that you are removing is smaller. This is why it occurred to me about 10 years ago that this operation could probably be done through a minimally invasive approach, namely a laparoscopic procedure. In the regular procedure, what we do is an abdominal incision, which is either a subcostal incision, a large incision below the ribs of the patient, or a midline incision. Uh, these incisions are more invasive, they're prone to more postoperative pain, they will keep the donor longer in the hospital, and they also may uh, herniate. Uh, when we do laparoscopy, what we do is uh, use smaller ports, like five uh, holes, keyholes, five, which are five to 10 millimeters in uh, length, to uh, introduce a video camera and surgical instruments so we can mobilize the, the, uh, the future graft and remove it. To uh, retrieve the graft, however, we need an incision. The incision is made in the lower part of uh, the abdomen in an area which is, first of all, it's a small incision, which is open and closed immediately. It's in an area which is not visible. It's, uh, what, it's the fan and steel incision, which is the same incision which is used for caesarean sections. So it's, it makes a big difference. The uh, donors for pediatric liver transplantation, uh, as I said before, are usually one of the parents. And the parents of young children are usually young people. And preserving their abdominal wall is really something that is uh, very important to them. And uh, these people actually will forget about their operations. Where the, whereas the people uh, who have a larger incision on, the, on their abdomen, a visible incision, will always have some kind of trace of this, of this operation. So that's basically uh, what we have been implementing here over the past two years. Donating a part of your liver has with it the risks that I think as um, that we want everyone to know are possible and then there are the challenges that all donors will face and that we want to prepare them for as much as possible because um, so what I mean by that is in removing 20 percent of someone's liver the risk of liver failure is pretty low. Um, and the risk of blood transfusions is fairly low, but not zero. Um, we, we as a program also worry about um, bile leaks and um, hernias. And those are all potential possibilities. But what we really want people to be prepared for is that undergoing uh, liver donation is major surgery and everybody will have a number of consequences that they ought to be prepared for. So they will be tired after the surgery, they will have pain after the surgery, and they'll need to be in the hospital typically for anywhere from three to five days after the surgery. So 
most of our donors will spend who donate to a pediatric recipient will spend three to five days in the hospital and then once they're eating walking around and their pain is controlled with pills they can go home um, in addition um, we expect them to have pain that is generally mild to moderate um, and is well controlled with pills but it is uh, will often require people to take pain medicine for several weeks after the, do the donation. And people should anticipate that they'll routinely need to take about a month off from work. And for some families that's very difficult. Um, for other families it's easier. Um, but we think if the more you're prepared to take time off, the easier it is to deal with it after the surgery. The other thing that many donors feel is they feel tired. Um, after general surgery and, and uh, even when the body is regenerating that 20% piece of liver, the, f the energy of the body is often focused internally and as a result um, people notice that they have a lot less energy in the month after surgery until their liver has recovered. We typically see donors um, two weeks after the surgery, four weeks after the surgery, six weeks after the surgery, three months after the surgery, six months after the surgery, and then annually uh, for at least five to ten years. Um, living donation remains a relatively um, new field and we want to ensure that donors are safe um, for the decades that will follow uh, after donation. Both the surgical and medical teams at New York Presbyterian uh, are um, uh, some of the best in the country and some of the best in the world. And the specific thing that we're bringing in this, in name, in, specifically in the in the area of pediatric living donor liver transplantation, is the possibility to uh, uh, perform the operation through the laparoscopic approach, which is unique in the country.